Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions, my name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out a game called Ace's Wild Manic Brawling Action by developer Culture Attack Studio. It is a 2D action brawler game as if the title didn't imply that already, right? Uh, it's a game with a phenomenal art style, great soundtrack, and a lot of deep brawling action if you're into that. So uh, we're going to give this a try. I have spent about uh, 10 minutes or so, I went through most of the first level. Uh, just to give it a feel, because this is one of those games that's got some depth to it, it's got some serious combat, and uh, you definitely want to make sure you're a little bit primed for it, otherwise, you know, it's just not going to be quite as entertaining. You're, you're going to be sort of looking at it on the surface level. Uh, and I did go through the tutorial, so I do have somewhat of an idea of what I'm doing, although I'm definitely not an expert by any means. And I have a feeling this is one of those games that, if you really want to push it, is going to be extremely tough. Uh, but I'm going to stick to the sassy difficulty right now, which uh, on our scale here starts at calm, sassy is number two, wild is number three, and uh, maniac is number four. Oh, no, and then maximus, of course, number five. So yeah, we're going to go two out of five then. Uh, hit pause, active only. I'm not actually 100% sure what that means. I guess when you hit stuff, the screen pauses. I mean, I think that's a thing that I've seen. So yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Let's uh, leave that on. Makes the action look more dramatic. So, I guess we'll just start up a new game at the first level, and let's choose our characters. So, there are our main characters here. We've got three to choose from Aces Wilder, or Ace Wilder, uh, Gene Drift, and Eagle Morris. I've tried the uh, these two guys, uh, Ace and Gene. I have not tried Eagle, and I have to say, Eagle looking just like Shinobi looks pretty freaking awesome. So, I think I'm going to try him out, although he's not the main character. I'm sure everyone will usually play as Ace. Uh, and I liked the feel of Gene, but I just want to see what Eagle's got to him, so let's try it. Alright, so the uh, the basic gameplay from moment to moment is basically just uh, traversing uh, large areas full of ninjas. <laughs> just taking them out in whatever means you can. Uh, things are obviously pretty frantic, and uh, there are some deep things we've got to learn here. So, uh, moves list. Let's go over some moves first thing. So we've got our basic attack on X. I am using a 360 controller, by the way, if you didn't know. And I'm basically playing as one of the enemies, which is kind of awesome, uh, you know, with a different colored scarf, of course. Uh, so we've got our jump on A, basic attack on X, we've got our charge attack on Y, which you need your panic meter for. Uh, and that can actually be used to deflect some bullets, and then we've also got a dash, which is on our left bumper, and then our, like, defense uh, dodge on our right bumper, or right, right trigger, I should say, for both of those, not bumper. And I think mostly all of those are pretty much everything we need to know for the, the early game. Uh, but we will, I'm sure, get into more complex stuff as well. There is also a panic mu uh, button, which I think might be just like smash all the face buttons or something. I've only done it once, and it restores some of your health, uh, which is a great thing to have if you end up taking some stupid damage. And right now, things are pretty calm and tranquil, uh, but there will be many, many more enemies on the screen, as well as several mini-bosses, and finally, uh, the level culminates in an actual boss. Uh, and as you can tell, we're spending the majority of our time up in the air, which I'm totally cool with. Uh, the game feels a lot to me like a Devil May Cry side-scrolling action game, which is totally awesome. I'm a huge fan of that kind of gameplay. And, uh, oh, you saw those uh, daggers just went by. If I would have deflected those at the right moment, I could have actually... Uh, well, I dodged them, but I could have also just not dodged them and gotten through them that way. Uh, so each enemy feels like it's got some substantial uh, HP to it, and then there's also some destructive environmental stuff, which is super nice. And in fact, I think one of my favorite things about this game is when you get those moments where there's a lot of destructible stuff in the environment around you, and you're actually able to take advantage of that and just smash stuff everywhere. It's very exciting, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the one thing that I noticed from my early gameplay was that it felt like a lot of the time these enemies, uh, and maybe it's just due to my lack of uh, expertise in the game, but it feels like a lot of the enemies take uh, quite a few hits, and the game feels more satisfying when you can go through enemies a lot faster, uh, because there are a few instances that I encountered where you'd get mobbed by, like, uh, 20 ninjas at the same time, and basically everything you do is just destroying something. I, this is sort of almost one of those moments. And uh, my panic is, uh, could probably be used in a moment just to get some health back. I think that would be a good idea. You know, the trade-off is that uh, you don't get as many points or your rank goes down. I think it's your rank goes down uh, when you use your panic. But, you know, sometimes you need to do that to stay alive. Alright, so we've gotten to... He's not a mini boss, just a sort of a regular grunt character, but a... Uh, a lovely Shiba Inu dog who <laughs> kind of feel a little bad wailing on considering he's uh, one of the more adorable dog uh, varieties out there. Let's see if I can use my panic on him and see what happens. Oh, I I sort of vanished for a moment, but it's okay because I got some health back. Uh, there is a, a good degree of variety in how you can attack as you can see. You know, there are 
various combos that you can trigger just by mashing the X button. But if you throw, you know, some directionals in, some Y buttons, some trying to, you know, deflective uh, moves like that. And actually, this character, in his case, he actually tends to disappear, but the other swordsman that I was using, uh, he actually, like, steps into the background for a second or, like, does a quick dodge, which actually feels quite satisfying when you pull that off uh, in the middle of some pretty frantic combat. So that's one screen there, and we'll just keep on going. There's uh, quite a bit to these levels from what I've seen. I believe there's something like six or seven levels to the game, at least from what I've noticed. And I haven't actually gotten through them, obviously, but just clicking on the boss rush mode, uh, that's what it let me choose from. Uh, I really do appreciate the uh, attention to detail and the visual design. Everything feels like it's pretty much in place. The music is outstanding, totally sets the vibe. Uh, there's some good voice acting work, uh, and it actually feels like the intro to me uh, sort of feels reminiscent of like the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 uh, aesthetic, the way that they they had that, I don't know, this is a very specific vibe about it. And uh, definitely a Japanese, uh, you know, uh, evocative motion that it seems like they're going in. Uh, totally cool by me, you know, I like it, I like the look of it. Uh, I wish there were maybe a few more frames of animation in some cases, but, you know, that's just a personal preference, I guess. Uh, specifically, uh, the second character, who I already forgot his name of, uh, when he drops in the air, it feels like he's sort of just sort of standing. But uh, this character doesn't feel quite that way. I think it's just uh, an individual character-by-character -character basis that that is the case. Let's take out another one of these hunters, and then we'll move on. Uh, there's a lot of screens, though, you'll see. Uh, the... I think the first time when I made it to the boss it was like 10 or 12 minutes and I died a couple times and you lose rank as well when you die. So I want to try and make sure I can get my panic meter up a bit, get some more uh, health back and hopefully survive a little bit longer. I am uh, not doing particularly well in terms of my combat uh, efficiency at the moment. I should be taking out these guys a little bit faster than I am, especially that hunter. We'll just try and air juggle these guys, like, indefinitely. It's great when you can play a game where you just never touch the ground, ever. <laughs> it's a good feeling. I like it a lot. Um, trying to think of what other games I've played that have felt like this. I mean, obviously Ninja Gaiden, but, like, these are all 3D action games, and I love the fact that this is 2D, and it's so smooth, and there's all these great effects. You know, the fact that when you hit stuff and it stops, like I was saying before, with the, the hit stop or whatever that option was, you know, it's a nice feeling. You get into this, uh, sort of a rhythm of uh, beating on whatever the enemies are and dispatching them one by one. Uh, and even better when you can get them all in a big pile and just dispatch them all together. Uh, did I get everybody? It seems like maybe I did. Oh, and I can like take out this little light there. Nice little effect when that breaks apart. And the art in the background, top notch as well. I mean the art in all respect top notch, but uh, you know, it doesn't stand out in any bad way is what I'm trying to say. Nothing seems uh, like it doesn't belong, in my opinion anyway. Uh, so we've got this, uh, what does it say, uh, some kind of fiddler crab character that I'm trying to fight. I'm gonna try and get my panic meter up high enough, uh, and I broke, I think it was like his shield. I should be using my uh, defensive moves a little bit more often as well, like my dash and stuff and my avoid. Uh, because when you can get that down, it does feel really nice. You get, you sort of look for cues uh, when the character's gonna attack, and you try and nail that moment. Uh, to moment movement, and it also evokes a little bit of Bayonetta to me, uh, which one of my favorite things about that game in uh, particular is the fact that it had such accurate uh, dodging and defensive movements to it, and I think this actually feels a little like that, you know, provided you're uh, up to the task, which I don't know if everyone is. So I vanquished the Hermit Crab, or the Fiddler Crab, rather, and we will move on. There are actually, I believe, two mini-bosses before we actually get to the point where we're fighting our final boss in this uh, level, and then, you know, starting another level. Uh, the game seems to lack any, like, RPG elements to it, not that that would be a thing that's really necessary. I kind of like that you start with all the moves you need uh, to do the job, but I am also curious uh, what's going to happen later on when you get to the harder levels. Like, are we just going to have more enemies, or are we going to have more difficult enemies, or are we going to uh, fine-tune the combat so things start to feel a little bit more... Uh, you know, careful the way you have to approach each enemy. Maybe there are some gimmicks involved you have to watch out for, certain tell signs. And I love when I, my character just looks like he's doing some kind of a ninpo move, and then he just smashes everything around. You know, it's- oh, look at that! Ninja just summoned, like, 20 doppelgangers who hopefully I can gather them all into a ball here, and just put them all together. There we go. Alright, so making my way up a little bit more, fight this guy. Uh, you know, the one thing that I think could set in a little bit is, uh, you know, button mashing fatigue at times, because like I said, the levels feel a little bit long. Uh, and sometimes it feels like there's not a great degree of challenge, but again, that's because I'm playing on a very uh, easy difficulty mode. 
Uh, but I sort of wonder if the game was ratcheted up way higher in difficulty, would this just get, you know, frustrating? Because if you just can't, you know, hang with the, the level of uh, AI throwing at, you know, so many different moves at you, what are you going to do about that? And my, my thumb, I won't lie, gets a little tired uh, after going through this many enemies just to get to the, uh, the final boss and then potentially lose, which, you know, you don't lose the whole thing, you can still come back. Uh, and fight him again, but your rank is decreased, and if you're trying to go for, like, a perfect score or something, well, you know, it's not gonna be easy. You know, this is, uh, it's got a little bit of that, like, hardcore Volgar the Viking feeling to it in a totally different way, of course, than Volgar the Viking does. It's not quite as experiential, uh, you know, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, but you do need to be able to be very careful in the way that you look at the characters and watch for all their, you know, hit tells. Uh, and try and, you know, take advantage of the AI if you can. I could really use a panic here if I could get one uh, together, but it doesn't look like that might be happening anytime soon. So I've defeated one of this guy, and we're immediately replacing him with another one. Uh, you'll notice his power bar seems to be blue, and then replaced uh, with his either yellow or red. Uh, I'm a little confused as to how to read the power bars on some of the enemies, uh, but I guess we have to break through a shield before we can actually damage them. Uh, you know, still, first impressions for the most part. I've played it for a few minutes, but I don't know all of the nuances just yet. Uh, not like I'm not willing to learn, and for the most part, my impressions are very, very positive this game. I have uh, no idea at all why this isn't getting as much coverage as it should be, because uh, it's really fun. You know, if you're in the mood for something really chaotic, I don't think you could do much better. Uh, smashing through this guy just fine, and one more guy here, and hopefully he doesn't take me out. Alright, I think we got him. Sometimes I can't always tell that I've uh, finished off one of these guys, and then I wander around for a minute looking for the next ninja to uh, fight. Oh, I'm almost dead. I don't see myself getting a panic in time. Now I'm just blindly attacking the air. I've got like two more hits left in me, it looks like. It'd be kind of cool if there were some power-ups as well, like, strewn about. It would be kind of nice to, like, run into, uh, maybe a destructible item that would, uh, give you a little bit of health back or something. Uh, just to give you an impetus to look around through the environments a little bit, because right now the environments feel a little bit superficial. You know, there's not a whole lot going on in them. Uh, yeah, and like I said, I really enjoy when things are destructible in this. I think it serves the game very well when uh, the most things are exploding and dying as possible uh, all at one time. So, you know... For there to be so many shipping containers all over the place that are largely static, you know, I feel like it may be a little bit of a disservice. It's just my opinion, but, uh, you know, it, it could be tweaked a little, perhaps. Uh, so we'll work on this Ironside character and hopefully get through him without taking too much stupid damage. Uh, I'm not using my defensive moves at all, which is really a mistake. Uh, Alright, so we've broken his shield. Smash him up a little bit more. Looks like your panic meter might also uh, get a little bit longer, like, the, uh, the point at which you need to trigger your panic might actually change based on how often you use it. Yeah, okay, so I used it, and the, uh, the threshold went up quite a bit there. Probably didn't even need to use it in that case, but I was just experimenting to see what would happen. Could be almost done with Ironside here. I'm not being particularly careful with how I fight him just because this guy, he's not that hard, uh, but at the same time, you know, I should be trying to learn and get better instead of just mashing my way through. Uh, which is a thing that I'm sure I wouldn't be able to do if I was playing on a harder difficulty level. Uh, the final boss of this area is uh, definitely a bit of a challenge. He's got a few phases to him in a way. Uh, he's also got some super attacks that you need to learn and avoid. Uh, Ironside feels a little bit more like a grunt in that he doesn't really... He doesn't do any, like, screen-clearing moves as much. He just, you know, attacks. Uh, mostly like these regular ninjas would do. Alright, there we go. Get a little teleport action in. Uh, it, playing as the other character, uh, the other sword-wielding character, I think was a little bit more gratifying. Uh, watching him sort of deflect through moves. And then there's also a counter, which I'm never doing. Uh, if you can actually absorb an attack by doing that, and then also do another move on top of it, you'll actually go ahead and uh, knock the enemy out of the way. Which is a thing that I'm pretty sure I need to be mastering. There we go. Oh, and we'll just knock a whole pile of ninjas out of that man whatever reason. Ninjas just, you know, they lie in wait. They have their own agendas. Ninja, ninja agendas. Right, lots of daggers coming out of this guy. I might actually not even be able to beat the final boss of this area, but if that is the case, well, at least we'll let that be a testament to what the game has to offer. Uh, but you should be probably getting the impression, like I was saying, that one of the few negatives I've seen is that the levels drag a little bit. Just having so many baddies to dispatch. You know, I would have preferred easier to dispatch baddies, uh, less of, or more of them in a smaller concentration of space, if that makes sense. So less, uh, general geography to cover, and more density, uh, one area to the next, which would really, you know, aid in, 
making things more frantic and frenetic, and I think that's just where the strength of this game lies. But this is, again, the first level, so uh, if things do change up, then my bad. I just haven't gotten there yet. There's a pretty good likelihood that it is what will happen. So, uh, okay, I guess I just need to walk through this. I was waiting for the boss to come out because the music got quiet, but I just needed to keep walking. And I do have a panic right off the bat, so I'm going to use that and refill my health, so that way we're on sort of an even ground here. It's a giant, giant silly dog uh, who is trained in the art of ninjutsu. There we go, I got a little uh, dodge move on me. And I think that is going to be absolutely necessary if you want to get through this guy, because he is pretty tough, he's got a lot of health, and he also has a lot of pretty cool attacks that we're going to hopefully see here. Well, of course we're going to see them. It'd be silly if we didn't. He actually has a move where he'll shoot a laser and cut through the ground, and then it'll come up as a big explosion. Uh, he can also summon other dogs to come help him fight, which I think are just to aid in uh, helping me get my panic up. And alright, let me get that going. Uh, I was trying to, you know, get some teleporting in. Oh, he's got some fireballs that he can shoot around. It looks like my ninja can actually, like, shoot his sword a little bit or something. I seem to have been doing some damage to him even when he wasn't directly in front of me. Uh, I can do chain teleports, it looks like, back to back, so that's a thing that I should probably work on. And it's looking like I'm not really doing very much health to him. Oh, he's about to do his laser move. But I stopped him in mid-animation there. Oh, what's going on? I think I broke his shield. And there he goes, bringing the puppies into play. He's got, like, half of his health bar right now, which is not good for me, because I've got, like, one-tenth of my health bar. And there we go, I'm out. I really do like that little uh, death frame as well. It uh, reminds me of, like, a scene from Okami or something, that, uh, like, Sumi brush painting technique. Uh, or, you know, Bushido style, I think. When, you know, they do those uh, overly dramatic... You know, sword flares or flourishes, and uh, everything cuts to that black and white silhouette move. And it's just that, you know, it's got some traditional cool Japanese art style tweaks to it. I think it serves the game quite well. Uh, so I'm still trying to continue to fight this guy, but I'm not that good yet. As you can see, I keep trying to dodge. I'm just trying to carry these chains as long as I can, but it's a tall order at times because he bounces all over the place. And I'm not that good at managing where my character is at any given moment, which I need to also get better at. Oh jeez, he shot a whole bunch of fireballs and did a ton of damage at me, uh, on me. Okay, I got a dodge there. Did you see that? I actually was able to teleport, and there was uh, a little bit of a purple contrail behind me. I did my panic that time. Is panic just B? I'm, it might be B, and I just haven't noticed. I actually forgot to set up the controllers. I'm just going, uh, rolling with the defaults. And I did it in tutorial mode. Regardless, smashing all the buttons will do it as well, so don't get me wrong. Alright, there we go, got another dodge in. Uh, it's really important to get those... Oh, explosion coming! Uh, I don't know if I did it. I think I might have done it. Very important to, to dodge that big move, because that, that is definitely going to knock my health out very quickly. So you'll notice his shield breaks, and then his, uh, where his shield was is replaced with... Or whatever we're calling it, his shield, his uh, blue bar, is replaced with a red bar, and I'm not sure exactly what that one is about. Uh, maybe that's like a counter of how long before he gets his shield back, or... I don't know. I haven't really seen a good description of how the life bars work. Maybe that's his panic meter, maybe everybody's got panic. Sanic panic. Alright, so uh, he's about half health right now, it looks like. Um, not doing so well, and it doesn't look like I'm about to get any panic back in either. Alright, get a... Get a Good dodge, watch out, that laser doesn't actually hurt, it's only the, uh, the move afterward, which apparently did not trigger, I thought it had. And he's got his shield back, so I don't know how this all works. <laughs> oh, goodness. Now, I can't, like, switch characters on the fly, otherwise I would have shown you the other two as well. Uh, but now that I've played all three, I think this might be my favorite character, although, you know, they all have their own, uh, situational uses, I'd say. Like, they all have their own feeling to them that's a little bit different. I think the ninja's more like a lot of fast strikes that do a little bit less damage with a sword. Uh, the other sword-wielding character is a little bit more maybe heavy-hitting, uh, but slower. And then the uh, the main character, uh, he uses, you know, his fists, and he hits a lot and very quickly. And I believe his damage seems to be pretty average, so, you know, there's a little bit of each type of character, I suppose, or whatever your style is. It would be kind of cool if there was, like, an unlockable character or something else like that, but... You know, I think the three are a nice uh, balance between what's available and what a player might want to see. I think I dodged it. Yes, I did. Oh, man. I saw the tell from a mile away, and I still didn't get that uh, dodge off in time. 
do have to have some pretty quick fingers, and you have to be really on top of watching what's going on uh, in a lot of different directions at once. That was a nice combo I think I just got uh, through there. And sometimes you just can't really tell what the enemies are doing. They sort of bounce around in unpredictable, strange ways. And managing multiple at the same time is a bit of a treat. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Bangayo in that case, if you have ever tried that. It's a... Uh, I don't know exactly how to describe it, like a little bit of a hybrid... Uh, crazy, over-the-top, like, puzzle... shooter, I guess shooter is maybe the right word, but, you know, it's... it's a little bit more heavier on the puzzle side of things. Uh, where is his health bar? I wish we could see his health bar a little bit more frequently, because it only pops up for a moment or two, and we're usually trying to watch a lot of stuff at the same time. Uh, I should mention, of course, this game does have some co-op, which unfortunately I'm not able to test, uh, but it's a thing that I would love to see, because with the action already this frantic, it, adding another player to it could be pretty wild. Uh, hence the title. I think I'm doing okay on this fight, probably better than I was in any of the previous ones, but I'm about to get destroyed, I have a feeling. These uh, puppies are not going to let me get away with much. Oh, I didn't get off the, uh, the dodge on that one. And I've been killed again, so I might need a little bit of work in my Ace's Wild play, but with that I think we should drop back out to the uh, main menu here. Manic Brawling Action indeed. I think that should give you a pretty good idea of what to expect. Uh, from Ace's Wild. Like I said, there are a bunch of levels. You can see uh, Barkley Bones, our first character, Rena Serena, Boss 2, Leslie and Herman Reuter, Boss 3, so far and so... Uh, yeah, it just keeps going. Stage 4, stage... Uh, we've got uh, some kind of crazy uh, laser facility here on Stage 5. Gene Drift, Stage 6, and Rex Wilder. So I think Gene Drift was actually the character I was playing as. And then, of course, high scores are trackable, which is another thing that'll keep people coming back, I have a feeling. And for arcade mode, I can actually jump to, I think, any of the levels right off the bat. So if I wanted to, I could just go to, like, Area 4 of the Foundry and just see how wild it gets with uh, this character. I, I was going to wrap up, but I think we might as well just take a moment or two. Oh, goodness, we've got we've got angry robots in this level, so that's going to be entertaining. Oh, man, now, now that I mentioned Bangayo, it looks a little bit like we're playing that now. Uh, I have no idea how to handle this. It looks like there might be lava below me, and if I fall, I'm just gonna end up in it. So, that could be a problem. I'm not nearly proficient enough to handle that. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna need a lot of practice. Probably have to knock the difficulty down a couple notches before things get any more reckless and crazy. Oh, goodness, I think I'm headed for the lava. Never touch the ground, man! Never touch it! You're a ninja in your own right. I do really enjoy that, the air juggles just never end. Like, I could just stay up here for a hundred years. And it looks like my health isn't really ending either. Uh, I seem to be able to capture it back by, I don't know, dodging through things and doing counters, and then trying to use my panic occasionally. Uh, this is pretty frantic. Oh man, why am I just straight up flying? I don't seem to need to be on the ground at all. My carriage is just sort of like seeking the next uh, thing to fight without me hardly doing anything. And nothing seems to be dying, either. I'm just, like, fighting and fighting and fighting and just bouncing around. Oh, missiles. That is what I need. Well, we are, like, halfway through this stage, right? I did pick, like, a level inside of the stage that was not at the beginning. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is Gene. I think Gene's pretty cool. I like him a lot, actually. He's got a blue trail behind him and a crazy sword. And he's kind of casual in how he approaches combat, but he's pretty powerful at the same time. Oh, I think I just bounced off the lava there. Now you can see that what I was talking about when I just sort of fall. He's just, well, he's got his uh, jacket behind him that flaps in the breeze, but he doesn't have a... Uh, he's not, like, afraid of falling or anything, which I guess why would you be if you can just hang up in the air for 10 million years? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think uh, this game is really cool. I think it definitely deserves a few plays, and I think you should go check it out. It is available right now. You can actually go grab it uh, if you want from the developer's site. I'm just air juggling myself off the edge of this world, but there is still another enemy here. Oh, who's gonna teleport around? You wanna, you wanna fight me, bro? There we go. Okay, now I can advance forward, and I think I do take damage every time I touch that. You can only, uh, double jump off the sides of walls, by the way, just in case you're running. Oh, or can you? No, evidently you can just double jump off the air now. I didn't think that was the case in the first level anyway. My mistake. So, oh, looks like you can destroy more of the environment. I love that. But yeah, I will be putting the uh, link in the description for you guys, so you can go ahead and check this game out. I definitely think it is worth a reasonably small price point. 
Uh, there's a lot to do in this game. It's dense, and uh, especially if you want to bring a friend in and play some co-op, I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, again, that is just my assertion, but it seems like a lot of fun. I mean, you have to have a propensity for this kind of combat, heavy, totally over-the-top, manic, crazy, frantic action. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that's a thing that a lot of people do like. I, I would think it is anyway, and that's my experience. Uh, from the people that I talk to on a regular basis, so it looks like I've taken enough damage there to be knocked out again, so... I, I wonder too, what is it, uh, there's a like KO-13, I guess that's how many enemies I've killed, there's the rank there, and then it says Eagle, and then I've got a score, and then it's got the difficulty at the top, there's a lot of things to keep track of in a way, but a lot of these are sort of second nature if you've ever played fighting games or brawlers in general. Uh, anyway, I think we should wrap up the episode, you've probably seen everything there is ne uh, to need to see to get what you need to get out of this game. Uh, I like it. I recommend it. I think you'll like it, too. Go try it. That's what I want to say. So, yeah, links again in the description, as well as all my other social media links. So you feel free to check out. I've got my Facebook page, I've got my Twitter page, I've got my Twitch page, so you can catch me when I go live streaming. And I've even got Indie-Impressions.com, which is the site that basically aggregate every episode, too. I've got over 500 other indie games that you can check out, so if you're into uh, whatever you're into, you know, and you're looking for more games to try, I've got 500 videos for you, man. There's something. There's always going to be something. You can sort them by different genres. You can sort them by tags. Uh, if you want to look for just free games or games that are featured on Steam or Desera or Greenlight-specific games, that's all available for you to check out. Uh, it's just to sort of make things a little bit easier and be a little bit more convenient for you, since, you know, 500 videos is not easy to sort through. Uh, so, you know, check it out. See if there's anything you like over there. Let me know if you liked it. And of course, uh, leave any comments you'd like to about this game. I'd love to hear what your opinion is. Uh, what do you think about games like this that are this crazy? And, I mean, look at all the destruction that's going on right now. The game keeps freezing because it's like, dudes dying and stuff breaking. It's, it's very exciting. I like it a whole bunch. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. I am curious, of course. And of course, any support you can leave for the series is highly welcome. If you're still enjoying the series, let me know that as well. And if there's any other games you'd like to suggest for the series, uh, let me know in the comments or, you know, via PM on uh, YouTube. Send me an email via the contact form on Indie-Impressions. Whatever you gotta do, totally cool with it. I'm not uh, too picky about how you get in contact with me. Uh, so, that'll do it for another episode. I hope you guys will join me again tomorrow. I do a new one every single day without exception. Over 500 episodes and going strong. So I will catch you tomorrow on my channel youtube.com slash rock and smile I'll say that just in case you caught this on another website because sometimes these episodes get aggregated to other places so yeah come visit hope to see you soon and i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you tomorrow have a good night